So Josh, I'm glad you came by. What do you got going on today? Well, I tried to start the car earlier. It just won't start that that well. And and I, I want to ask you, can we do something about I it? I think I know what the problem is. I don't think the automatic choke's working at all. When we rebuilt the engine, we noticed that the um, the heat stove tube was cracked and we didn't happen to have a replacement, so we just decided that at a later date we'd put an electric choke on and we just blocked up the, the, the tube. Fairly common that there's a problem with the, the old um, stove type choke, mm -hmm. and so um, it's easy enough to, um, con to convert a lot of these carburetors over to an electric choke. Especially this one here, this got the carter in it. We'll get that installed and, and I'll do a little explanation on, All right. on how, the, how a choke works. And then we'll get on to uh, converting this one from the stove type choke to an electric. Oh, super. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate okay, it. sounds good, John. <laughs> so as we were talking about, that the problem with the 64 was that the, the uh, heat stove was damaged and that we'd plugged it off. Now, you may be wondering what the heat stove is. Well, we got the manifold here for a 59. And the um, heat stove is a stainless steel tube that passes through. And, we'll, and this one here, like in the 64, is um, broken. There's a big crack in it. So when the engine's running, we'll have exhaust gases coming, th through, coming through this tube. And that tube has another pipe on it that leads to the carburetor. And inside the carburetor is a bimetallic spring. This spring moves like that with temperature. So you have hot air, you have air being sucked through the tube by a slight vacuum leak into the carburetor. So this warmed air is being sucked into here. It warms this heating element, or this uh, thermostatic element, and operates on the lever here and that's what will take and slowly open the choke as the engine warms up. And what happens, is like in this unit here where it's cracked, you start to get exhaust gases blowing in here. This whole unit gets all coked up with carbon, the whole housing. Sometimes if it's a real bad leak, it'll burn things up. This Bakelite cover will be, be blistered. So what we've done on the, um, on the 64 is we've drilled and tapped the, the two holes out and plugged them. Um, and we're going to the electric choke. Now this manifold, because it is for our tri-power, we're gonna, I'm gonna make a new heat stove tube inside and, and restore this, but that's a lot of work. On this one here, it's the heat of the warm air being, uh, cool air being sucked through the tube and warmed and brought into the housing to operate the spring. The electric choke has an electric heating element. So on this style, the tube to the stove would be coming out the side right on, on here and now we have electrical contacts and so as electricity is applied the um it'll heat this backing plate and and that'll operate the spring so we're going to set this up here on the power supply and do a time lapse so you can see the spring move and um, then we'll get back over onto the 64 and get working on doing the conversion Okay, now that we've um, talked about how the choke works, let's get to uh, doing the upgrade on this car. So the first step today is to remove the old um, hot air activated choke. So there's our, just like we looked at in the other room on that Rochester. the gasket in here. So there's the lever that actu actuates the choke and it's um, binding up on the um, throttle linkage right now but kind of hard to reach over there. Get that throttle to open it. There we go. So there it is all the way closed and as the spring heats up allows it to fall open. So this is a real easy uh, modification. So we got the old one off. I'm gonna bring the new one. Line, put the gasket in. 
And what we want to make sure we do is we that we take this finger here, as you remember, as it heated up, it would move that direction. So that takes and would be pulling up to close the choke. We just want to make sure that the um, the arm coming out from the choke hooks in like this. This is the choke actuating lever that hooks in like that. So if you start it kind of over and then turn it, you'll do fine. We start it well over to the side. We gotta get all the little fingers on the brackets lined up, which is not exactly easy sometimes. One of those jobs you need three hands and there's only room for one. So now we got the, uh, the new uh, thermostatic housing mounted. I'm just going to push the throttle a little bit open so that it's off the fast idle cam. And as we turn the choke housing, we can see the choke plate start to close. So I'm going to give it a setting just about right there, just an initial setting where the choke is closed. And then we can tighten down the screws. You'll have to make a, a final adjustment after it's all installed and get the engine started and and it tells you to you can turn it turn it uh, uh, the clockwise to go richer and counterclockwise to go leaner so if you start the car and it's kind of bucking and, and choking you get a little black smoke turn this a little bit counterclockwise if when you started it initially fires and then dies turn it clockwise richen it up a little bit so we'll initially tighten this down in that kind of almost in the middle position. And then something you don't want to forget is to take and um, where the old um, uh, hot air pipe went, that's a vacuum leak in there. And that's, we want to block that off just because we, we don't need any air being sucked into this housing anymore. And it could suck a little bit of dirt in, up into the carburetor. So I just got a rubber plug here that we're going to we're going to just slip over that old fitting. It's kind of down here deep. And that'll, that'll block that up. And so the next step is to uh, set up some uh, electrical wiring. And I'll show you a really neat trick to make, make your new wiring look old. And but I'll talk to you for a minute about where we get our power source. The choke wants to see 12 volts when the key is in the run position. You do not want to have it wired to the accessory position. Because if you went out and turned the car up to accessory, listen to the radio for a few minutes or whatever, you would be heating the choke. And when you went to start the car, the choke wouldn't be in the right position. So you want to make sure that the, the choke is wired to ignition. And you do not want to wire the choke up to the coil. Many people think, oh, we can just go onto the hot side of the coil and get 12 volts there. Well, the hot side of the coil has already been through a ballast resistor. And that ballast resistor is set up to work with the resistance of the coil. You put an additional load on there, you're going to draw the voltage down, so you're going to have a misfire or maybe even no ignition at all and your choke is never going to heat up properly. So don't be tempted just to run over to the coil and pick up power there. That's not the place to get it. Best place to go back to is into the fuse box, onto an ignition position in the fuse box. So what we're going to do now is um, make up our uh, wiring. So we need a, um, a ground wire that goes from the choke to the housing on the carburetor, then, and then we'll use this white wire for ignition power. Now, a little trick I like to do is with these crimp connectors, you can see I got the soldering iron out, so you know I like to solder them. But when we're working on these old cars, get these colored um, pieces of plastic on the connectors, they, they look bad. Don't blend in under the hood. Take the connector and 
slit the plastic. And usually then pull it right off. Then what I will do is get a little piece of a vacuum hose. That. Since we're doing three, I'll cut three of them here the, the same size. And this makes this come out looking really neat. We'll clean the end of this wire up. Yeah. Slip our piece of rubber on there first. Set a crimp. Give it a little solder. Okay, now you can take and push that piece of rubber tubing up over the crimp. That'll blend in a lot better under the hood of an old car versus having the blue plastic showing. It actually provides a little bit better of a strain relief. So now we, we're going to hook up our electrical wiring. What we've already done is shove this wire in to the engine compartment from under the dash. And we'll, that will be our hot wire and this is going to be our ground. I'm going to use this screw right here as a place to connect the ground up. As you can see, it's an awkward place to work with the fuel line and the refrigeration line. So if you happen to be thinking about doing this and you're thinking maybe your carburetor needs to be rebuilt, it's a lot easier to do it when it's off the car. clips here and we'll dress this wire out here along with the vacuum lines and get the um, air cleaner back on and that's all there is to it. There's very simple modification so if you've got trouble with your manifold and your heat stove is not in good condition and you don't want to go to the trouble of repairing it or trying to locate the parts which we have some of the parts some of the time it's usually a uh, only available as a new old stock and they're not very common. So there you go, electric choke on your uh, Carter AFB. Another job done on the 64 Eldorado. If you need the part we use today, Click on the link in the description below. At Caddy Daddy Presents, it's all about giving back. Please enjoy the video of the Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Helena and Calistoga.
donate by clicking the link in the video description.